OBD2 stands for Onboard Diagnostics and is the standard self-diagnostic system of the vehicle. The 2 represents the second version which has been standardized in 1996 and has been used in most cars ever since. And the name sums it up pretty well. After you plug in a special diagnostics tool, you're able to read various error codes that have been recorded by the car's various computers and modules when certain components or sensors stop working. It's a really useful thing that can help you pinpoint what exactly may be wrong with the car. That being said, Monica, my E36 doesn't have it. Ever since I did the swap, I never got around to doing it and never needed it. The only problem it has is a choppy idle sometimes when the engine is cold, but it always goes away when it warms up. However, last year, when I was drifting the car, I let my buddy Eric, who knows these cars way better than I do, drive the car to get some feedback on the suspension setup. And he noted that the electric gas pedal has a little bit of a delay and that I should clear the adaptations with an OBD scanner. I honestly didn't notice any delay in the gas pedal, but it's probably due to the point that my driving abilities aren't quite that good yet. However, that gave me a good enough reason to install the OBD port. I ordered a female OBD2 connector online and I also got a wiring diagram from someone who also did an M54 swap into an E36. The diagram is for an S54 swap into an E30. The E30 part doesn't really matter and I think as far as the OBD goes, the M54 and S54 ECUs use the same pins, which I verified with a pinout of the MS43 ECU that I'm using. So how you connect it is very simple. First you connect the pins 4 and 5 on the OBD connector to ground, then you connect the pin 1 to a switch 12V and pin 16 to constant 12V. Then you connect the pin 7 to the X60004 connector of the ECU, pin 32, and finally you connect the pin 9 to the pin 17 of that same connector. The pin 17 is also used by the tachometer in the dash, so don't get confused why there are two wires going to the same pin on the ECU. And that's pretty much it. Before I got started, I obviously disconnected the battery. Then I had to untangle the wiring mess and remove the cover to get access to the ECU. The ECU should just slide out, because the holder I made for it didn't have any locking mechanism. But the ECU wouldn't budge. That was strange, I thought, and I unbolted the whole ECU holder. Holy moly, holy, holy moly. Yeah, it looks like I underestimated the temperature in that little compartment and the PETG material that was used for the print just wasn't temperature resistant enough. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to use a better material next time. Just to test if the wiring diagram is correct, I first wanted to connect all the wires to the pins of the OBD connector and test it out. And if it works, I would then find a more permanent place for where to put it. After it was done, it was time to test it out. I smell fuel. And it looks like one of the fuel lines started leaking, which is something I'm gonna have to fix. For now, I just disconnected the fuel pump relay to stop the leak. And I tested it again. It wouldn't automatically find the right car, but after putting in E46 and the MS43 ECU, which is what I have, I could read fault codes. And to me, everything seemed pretty okay. Mainly, there were only codes for things that I don't have connected, like the electric fan, radiator water temperature, road speed signal, secondary O2 sensors, the fuel pump. Although, one thing I'll have to check is the exhaust camshaft position sensor, which may have something to do with that idle. Anyway, once I made sure it works, I could find a better place to mount the connector. I decided to put it on the control panel that I have in the center of the car with switches and buttons for various things. I had to feed the wires through the firewall, so I needed to disassemble the right side of the dash. I also decided that I'm going to build a little terminal where the original alarm module used to be, so I can use it for power and ground sources for future interior mods. The terminal is going to be bolted to the little plate that was already in the car, so I measured it and the alarm module itself to make sure it wouldn't be too big and the glove box would still fit. Then I quickly whipped it up in CAD and 3D printed it. It looks good, there is just one problem though. So, you know what they say, measure twice, print once. 
It was not a big deal, I just drilled another hole. I then got some thicker wires that I salvaged from an old wiring harness and crimped the eye connectors on one end, except with the switch 12 volt wire, that one I had to solder to the already crimped bundle of wires. If I had a crimp that big I would use that, but unfortunately I don't, so I had to solder. The connection is pretty strong though, and I think it should hold fine. I also crimped one of the wires that I couldn't solder nicely and connected all the wires to their respective sources. Then I fed them through the firewall, installed the terminal and connected the wires. Get these cables and then cut them to length so they fit here. Just in case. Just in case. I still needed to prep the control panel, so I took it out. I drilled the hole for the wires with the biggest drill bit I could find, but it was unfortunately still too small. So I just had to grind the hole a little bit more to make it bigger. Then I filed it down and used some electrical tape to give some protection for the wires. So that I can bolt it down, I drilled two more holes and put thread rivets in there. To see how it would all fit, I installed it in the car. Now I just had to crimp the eye terminals to the ground, switched power and constant power wires and connect the two wires coming from the ECU. I decided to use these connectors for the ECU wires so that I can disconnect them in the future and still remove the control panel. Before connecting everything I checked the voltage on my DIY terminal and made sure nothing was short circuiting. And because it all looked fine I finally connected the OBD port after double checking every wire. I then connected the scanner, it connected like it did before. It also displayed the same fault codes, which is great, and it should mean that it works. I also tried to delete the adaptations and it also worked. I was super happy that everything was working so I could reassemble the control panel. When I fixed the fuel leaking issue I also tested it with the car running and confirmed no problems. Thankfully it was just a loose hose clamp. For now, I left the left side of the dashboard disassembled because I needed to feed some more wires through the firewall for future mods, that you'll be able to see in the following video. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can leave a like on it and consider subscribing to be notified when new videos come out. However, if you don't want to do that, that is also fine. If you'd like to get yourself some of the classic Wonderful World stickers, the link to those is down in the description. Again. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.